Okay, good evening, good evening, good evening, everybody. If we can all grab a seat, we will get right into this thing. There's a lot of information tonight. Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Greg Clifton. I serve as your city manager. It's good to see you all. Thank you so much for spending time with us in the evening. The topic tonight is spruce wash and the many projects underway. You may have been to meetings like this before. Uh, we do these on a fairly regular basis, but I assure you the news is always up to date and relevant. So you'll hear stuff tonight that will bring you up to date. Four years ago, we had the catastrophic museum fire. Two years ago, we had multiple flash floods resulting from that fire. We've had other fires and a lot more floods since then, but tonight, specifically, we're talking about Spruce Wash. Last year, the voters of this community, uh, by wide margin, approved a very important bond to fund millions of dollars, $26 million, uh, towards Spruce Wash improvements. Uh, that was the culmination of a lot of effort preceding it, a lot of uh, information and planning by staff, by the engineers, and a lot of election preparation by the Citizen Bond Committee. It was a very successful undertaking and a wonderful outcome on, on, at the ballot on a very important topic. Um, within several months of that successful ballot measure, things have started to happen, but I want to impress upon you the planning and the engineering and the designing preceded uh, the ballot last November by a considerable time frame. The work has been in progress for some time. The planning efforts um, have uh, been very successful and now we're beginning to see things materialize. The construction schedule that you'll hear about here in a few minutes uh, is a very aggressive one. And uh, for this effort, uh, our thanks go out to the dedication and the wonderful talents of our city staff, our consultant team, which is vast, and uh, to everybody who's been involved in this. It has been a huge community effort. So with that in mind, uh, you will just uh, in a minute be hearing from our staff and consultants who are ready to share a lot of information with you tonight about the flood mitigation uh, projects that are now in the works. It's very exciting. Uh, so before we hear from them, I want to make one more introduction here. Uh, Patrice, are you prepared to come up? Yeah, you're right in front of me. Uh, Pat Patrice Horseman, our supervisor with the county, and thanks for joining us, Patrice. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Patrice Horseman. I'm the supervisor for District 1, and I know our new chair, Geronimo Vasquez, who's a supervisor for District 2 should be here um, anytime. And really between District 1 and District 2, it really encompasses the area that we're talking about here today. But what I wanted to talk to you about is to basically explain how this is a shining example of when collaboration and partnership with local government works for the people. The Spruce Wash Project is part of a collaboration that we have with the county and the city and with our private partners and also with the federal government who we have received a tremendous amount of funding in order to accomplish this for our citizens and our residents here in Flagstaff. So we're very, very proud of the collaboration and the partnership and what we have been able to accomplish within a year, within a year of when last fires were happening. And I know this is museum, but the museum fire as well, this was just in record time that we were able to accomplish this. Uh, the Parkway Basin was put in by the county to help the um, uh, flood mitigation done by the city of Flagstaff to help remove some of that sediment. And the county will be working again with the city on the spruce wash 
in doing some work on forest up in some alluvial fan work. So we are very excited on the partnership. We are very excited at what we have been able to accomplish in record time. And as I said, this is an example of where government does in fact work. So uh, I'm excited to listen to the update and it's so great to see the partners for the city. Many of those are the same partners that we have worked with in the county. And really there's so much kudos goes not to the city staff and our partners and the county staff uh, again, working together for you. So uh, with that, uh, I'm going to turn this over to Julie. Thank you, Supervisor Horseman. Thank you, City Manager Clifton. Welcome, everybody. It's good to see so many familiar faces. We've been together for quite a few years working on these projects. Um, is there a place I can put this? I need to hold this. So I want to welcome the folks that are here with us tonight, and I also want to welcome the folks that are watching and participating online. This presentation will be posted to the website, so you can watch it again later if you would like. Um, if I see Chair Vasquez come in, I will certainly um, announce um, when he does. So again, if you can't be here tonight in person, um, we'll provide contact. Oh. All right, Chair Vasquez, welcome. You know what? Would you like a moment to make a few remarks or want me just to continue at this point? Okay, all right, sounds good. Thanks for joining us. All right, um, so we're, we're going to provide contact info at the end of this presentation. So folks that are watching and um, you have some follow-up questions that you can reach out to us. There are many ways to get in touch with us. All right, so the way things are going to work this evening, we are planning to keep this presentation brief. And the reason why is that we have plans and maps printed, and we have a team of engineers, city staff, contractors to answer your questions. In fact, if you wouldn't mind, um, city staff, engineering team, construction team, can you just all stand up for a moment, please? This is your support team. We are here to answer your questions. Um, we're, we're here to, to work with you. So take a look around. Any one of us as we finish up here, we'll be happy to, to meet with you. Thanks, everybody. All right. Um, so we're just going to do a brief review of the project status. And um, I know what you are very eager to see are the updated flood models. So Joe with J.E. Fuller is here with us tonight, and he is going to present that updated flood impact e exhibit showing the benefit of the $26 million investment in the um, urban infrastructure, the city infrastructure. And then after we get through the presentation, we'll also hear um, about the upcoming schedule. And then we're going to go into the back of the room and also into the foyer and do the breakout tables. Right. So we have a lot of work that has happened in the last 10 months. And as City Manager Clifton said, it did start a little bit before um, that 441 vote in November last year. Um, but since 441 passed in November, we did updated hydrology. So went out, um, the J.E. Fuller team went out into the burn scar and evaluated the conditions. We needed to recognize the benefit of the flood control district work and all of the on-forest watershed restoration work that had occurred. That was very important for establishing the baseline for all of the work that we do. The city has selected a contractor since November, and they did it through a qualifications-based selection process. That contractor is Eagle Mountain Construction. The team with EMC is here with us the e this evening. We completed the feasibility study, which I think we presented to you, I believe it was in June, in the community, and this is also um, online for your review. We've designed the Grand View improvements, a portion of the Grand View improvements, knowing that we needed to accelerate that piece. And then we have completed 30% design and modeling for the full suite of projects, all the way from the end of Paradise Road, or I guess the Parkway Basins, um, down to the Killip Regional Detention Basins. And here we are today in a public meeting. 
And starting next week, we are going to be starting construction on utilities for Grandview Drive. So there is much work underway. Our next steps moving forward, 60% design. That'll be the middle of fall here, about October. We need to have these interim milestones to check in, make sure the design's proceeding properly, the modeling gets updated as well. We're looking at final design before the holidays, the Christmas holiday, New Year holiday, and then continuing construction of all of the suite of projects with a goal of completion prior to monsoons of 2026. Right. So with that, I'm going to ask Joe Loverich to come on up here. He's going to walk through the, there you are, Joe, thanks, walk through the suite of projects and talk about the modeling. All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, thanks for being here. And uh, yeah, I'm going to walk through a few things with you tonight. What I'll do is give you a brief overview of uh, where we're at, where all these different projects are that are proposed, how they interact, and then run down through the hydraulic modeling that we've done to reflect what the flooding conditions would be uh, after all this stuff is completed. So, so this, this is the handout you guys have, uh, so I won't go through it too much, but note the numbers. These are, these are the different things we're going to be talking about as I go down through the next couple slides. So the first one uh, that we're going to talk through, number one, is Grandview Drive. Grandview Drive is turning from a normal crown section where the high point is in the middle to an inverted crown that has a lot of capacity to carry water if water gets on the road. Right? So that's, that's number one. And so you can see that uh, it, it just changes in nature, which requires utility replacements. It requires some things that go along with that. So the, uh, the next component of it is the wedge. What this is, is a regional stormwater basin. It's called an offline detention basin, where you can pull water out of the channel, push it over to, or let it flow down into the wedge detention basin. And what that does is it takes some of the volume out of the water that's flowing down Spruce Avenue Wash so that the flood impacts downstream are less. That's project two. Project three is changing the Linda Vista road crossing from two culverts to a large box culvert. So we allow um, over double the amount that could previously go under the drive to go under the drive. So, so it's kind of this regulation valve in the, in the system, uh, allowing a certain amount of water to be in the channel downstream that can handle it. Number four, when you upsize that box culvert, you have to reinforce the channel downstream to be able to handle that increased water. That's the channel that extends from Linda Vista down to Cedar. Once you hit Cedar, the box culvert will be replaced to a larger box culvert, again, to handle the amount of water that's coming down to it. And if I'm going fast, just bear with me. We'll, we'll go through all this stuff um, a little bit more with the modeling. Downstream of that, you guys know that, that there was a Shot Creek channel built from Cedar to Dortha Avenue, and then Dortha has a new box culvert that goes across it. That's the, some touch-up work on that tying into the Cedar project is happening, and then downstream, that is turning into, rather than a pipe underneath the ground and a channel on top, it's gonna be a channel. So that takes that water on down to uh, the Arroyo Seco Inlet, which you can see here with all the concrete blocks and stuff that, were, that, were, that was put on it during the monsoons. This is all reconstructed to allow an efficient inlet into the existing storm drain and to do an underground conduit that runs over to the Killip detention basins to take the water off the surface of Ponderosa Park and put it into the Killip basins uh, underground. And that's what we're looking at. Eight is the Killip, uh, the Killip Inlet, we're calling it, and that's a box culver going underneath uh, Ponderosa Park. So what, what we're gonna see, and, and at our breakout sessions, we have prints of this modeling but this, these, are, these are the same depths we've been showing you, the same depth ramps we've been showing you the last four years. And so what, what this shows 
is that the blues are basically flow depths under a foot, the greens are between one and three foot, and then as you step up yellow, orange, into, into purple, that gets deeper up to, you know, over five feet of depth. So these exhibits that you'll be able to take a closer look at um, out on the tables show current conditions and post-project conditions. And what the, it, it, it's, uh, I think it's great. All these projects are taking this type of storm that we're modeling that could, could potentially hit the watershed, controlling it in a very nice way through these neighborhoods and um, reducing the flood risk for many, many homes. And again, uh, as we go down past Cedar, um, you end up with much more efficient channel system, a significant amount of water off of the streets so that the water that's on the streets is generally shallow and contained in the curb lines and, um, and conveying that in an in efficient way to the Killip Detention Basin. So what I'm gonna do to help explain all of this is, uh, gotta bear with me here, I'm gonna see if I can do the laser pointer also. This is a, a flyover, if you will, from, from the top uh, right above Linda Vista down to, down to Route 66. And so you'll be able to see the color ramp that we are looking at with, uh, with where the water is flowing. Some of the colors in this 3D view get a little, get a little wonky, so bear with me on that. But it might, it might help give you a perspective of how we expect the water to flow with these proposed conditions. So as we start in, uh, right behind us are the parkway basins. Here's the one that's been built right here. This water flows down towards Linda Vista. At Linda Vista, there's a box culvert proposed to replace those two culverts that go across the road, and also an inlet to a storm drain that's set a little bit above the bottom of the channel, so we let the low flows pass in the channel, and then it starts skimming water off down Linda Vista, underneath the ground, over to the wedge detention basin. The water that overtops, because we can't, we can't put all the water in the Grandview Channel, it comes down and again, it, it, it'll flow down Grandview if you get a big enough storm, but we'll, we'll circle back to that in just a second here. This is the storm drain, takes the water down to the wedge. This is a lot of the area that's already been cleared for a laydown yard. The wedge discharges into a storm drain that already exists underneath uh, west and cedar. It just needs a little bit of an upsizing. And so it's, it's a fairly deep, large regional basin. Now when we come back up towards, uh, towards Grandview, what you're gonna see with Grandview is by controlling the amount of water that goes to the wedge and controlling the amount of water that goes underneath Linda Vista, we're able to keep the flood limits in Grandview really to the extent of the road. So it, it's a significant reduction in the amount of water that could potentially flow down Grandview. Water that can potentially back up into the cul-de-sacs. The channel down behind Grandview, there's a little bit of tweaking, realignment, um, but it, it really, it's not a super wide channel. It fits, fits well within what is back there. The inverted crown on Grandview, again, is a uh, pretty typical road section. Curbs stay essentially where they're at. It just changes the, uh, uh, the profile of the road. Coming down towards Cedar Avenue. At Cedar Avenue, again, that channel widens, widens out. Box culvert goes across. Continue that water will continue down the Shot Creek Channel. That's already there. Now, this water that you see over here on the side streets, significant reduction from where it is right now, and you'll be able to see that on the side by side map. So it's a huge benefit for this area. Once we pass Dortha, um, this is where that channel will be an open channel rather than a pipe and a channel on top. So it's an efficient way for the water down to flow down to Arroyo Seco. And this is what I was talking about at that Arroyo Seco inlet. There's an inlet to the Spruce Wash storm drain 
and a pipe underneath Ponderosa Park to get that water to the Killip Regional Basin. Once it's in Killip, th this is where um, water is going to flow on the streets, uh, similar to what it does now. What the good thing is, is that while the peak flow may, uh, may be really similar to what it is, the volume of water that's going to be flowing down those roads is significant less. So the duration of the flooding is lo less. And, um, uh, and by that time, the sediment, uh, all, the, all that kind of damage will be a lot less. So that's, uh, that'll take us down to Route 66. So the downstream end of our improvements, oh, all these improvements are really the Killip Regional Retention Basin. So all that said, if you want more info on that, catch me at the end and we can talk through it. Uh, these maps will be at the tables and uh, we'll go from there. Ed? All right, thanks, Joe. So Ed Shank, the Stormwater Section Director uh, for the City of Flagstaff. Just going to keep it very brief here. I know we want to get out to the breakout tables. So just a quick summary of what Joe kind of showed and what you're going to be able to see on those tables. Uh, the projects that we're showing here, this $26 million through that Proposition 441, uh, do largely uh, improve our, our area to the point that that two-inch storm, so a two-inch and 45-minute storm, which is roughly a 25-year event, uh, will be largely mitigated uh, between Paradise and uh, Killip Basin. Uh, and our hope is that we will continue these projects to also improve the, the longer term, uh, which would be that FEMA map. So obviously, if you live out there, you, most of you have uh, flood insurance. Uh, part of that is required if you have a FEMA map that shows that you're in a special flood hazard area. So as that special flood hazard area map is uh, changed in the future, we're really pushing hard to make sure that this money through this proposition uh, reduces that footprint as, mo as much as possible. So lots of great work going on. Uh, again, very quick summary. All, all of us will be in the back. I'm going to turn this over to Eagle Mountain for uh, some of the work that's going on right now with the first phase of the construction. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Joel Reinen. I am a project manager with Eagle Mountain Construction. We are excited to get started with the, the first phase of this project, which is the replacement of water and sewer lines and services on Grandview and down to Main Street. So we realize that uh, this construction is going to be an inconvenience to, to you neighbors, but we're going to uh, be assured that we're going to do everything we can uh, to provide access to your properties via uh, whether it be steel plates or backfilling every night. Um, we're here to work with our neighbors and uh, get this project done. We value our relationship with the city and our neighbors. You are our neighbors. We live here in Flagstaff. We appreciate uh, the cooperation uh, that we get from city staff and hopefully through through our neighborhood. So these are some slides of what uh, the construction is going to look like on Grandview. Uh, this is a project in the Coconino Stage, which is very similar to this project. Um, and then at the end, in the next phase of this project, uh, will be the curb and street improvements. So we're here to, to answer any questions and concerns that you might have. Um, we'll be at the tables also to answer any questions about your access to your properties and uh, how this uh, construction is going to sequence and schedule. But uh, we want you to keep in mind that when this project is done, even though it's an inconvenience right now, it's going to be a beautiful street uh, with new amenities and it's going to be functional in its purpose and you'll have uh, new water and sewer lines. So uh, we look forward to working with each one of you. Um, we'll answer any questions that you have at the back table. Um, this is a slide of, of Coconino Estates when we were done with the project paved and curbed. So hopefully, uh, well, we know for sure that your project is going to look just like this one. We'll turn it over to the next presenter. Thank you, Joel. 
Well, good evening, and thank you all for being here. I'm the last slide, and then we're going to cut you loose to the breakout tables. My name is Scott Overton, and I'm the uh, Public Works Director here at the city. You've heard from a lot of quick experts on the overview. Um, I want to point out a couple more things. Joel, uh, I, I want to just quickly mention that the wedge is also a piece of construction that's related to Grandview. You've probably seen some tree removal on that parcel. It is a future uh, basin that will be delivered at a later phase, but right now it will be utilized as a construction yard for Eagle Mountain. And also Parkway Basins. Uh, basin 3 was completed just upstream of the Linda Vista crossing. Basins 1 and 2 are now funded thanks to the Flood Control District and the supervisors, and that will be underway um, as soon as they can get that procured. So remember, all of these projects work together. I think Joe's model did a really nice job of flying you through the area and really gives you some depth and understanding of what all these engineering teams have to sort through um, as they solve the problem and not simply push a problem to a different area. So great work on their behalf. I'm going to release you to the tables, but I want to quickly introduce the firms and have them stand up so you know exactly which section they're speaking to if you have specific questions about an area. And then they'll break out between the back tables and the uh, tables set up in the lobby. Um, also, we have a representative from sustainability with us this evening. I'll start introducing Jenny Neiman. Jenny, if you don't mind standing for us, you might have seen a door flyer that talked about some funding opportunities available for flood proofing or some assistance if needed through our sustainability group. Jenny can help you navigate that request or that data. If you need some insights on that, there was a door hanger on your door the last couple weeks. Jenny is going to be your point contact tonight if you have some questions about that grant project. Let's start at Linda Vista Crossing. Eric and Joe will be your primary points of contract at Linda Vista Crossing. The Wedge. Where's Caleb? Caleb and Julie with Peak Engineering for the Wedge parcel. Grandview Utilities, Julie and Caleb, or Caleb and Julie. Grandview Utilities. Julie's also responsible for Feasibility Phase 2 if you have questions about that. Channel improvements between Linda Vista and Cedar. Joe and Eric, or Eric and Joe. Cedar Crossing, where's, um, there we go. Steven and Kayla in the back, they are with SWI Ardura, and they are, again, Cedar Crossing. Segment between Cedar and Arroyo Seco, open channel. Is that you, Rick? Rick Schuler from Woodson, Ardura. He'll be your representative for that open channel between Cedar and Arroyo Seco. Arroyo Seco Inlet. Stephen and Kayla, or Kayla and Stephen, Arroyo Seco Inlet. That is the real compact location right there at those townhomes. How about uh, Arroyo Seco to Killip Detention Basins? Caleb, or I'm sorry, uh, the segment through the Ponderosa Park will be Caleb, excuse me, Stephen, and Kayla. And last piece would be West Wash Connection from Killip Outlet, Julie, and Caleb. If you find the wrong table, they will steer you to the correct one. But as you can see, I think it demonstrates really good teamwork. This group meets every Monday, and they sort through the problems. They share the data. They share the modeling. If you have modeling questions, that's going to come back to Joe as well. This team is pretty unified. If they don't have the right answer, they're going to find you the engineer that does. We need your participation and your cooperation. And you just showing up tonight to get more information helps us deliver this. In advance of the project work starting next week, we apologize for the dust, the noise, the kind of disruption to your daily lives. I have full confidence Eagle Mountain will help you get through that as quickly as possible. They did a great job for us up in um, um, Coconino Estates. Last person to introduce is Eli Reisner. Eli, where'd you go? Eli's at the back of the room at the double doors. Eli is one of our uh, project managers in capital engineering, and uh, he will be your point of contact from the city side that will work as an intermediate between the contractor and what we do to deliver the project. So you have lots of representation here tonight. Um, anyone I missed that we really need to introduce? All right. You good? 
Let's go find those engineers, get to those tables. Again, we appreciate you being here, and let's answer all your questions at those tables.